guys, Basie and I wanted to share a story with you today in the middle of the week. This story is called Marvin Makes Music and it is about Marvin Hamlish and it is by Jim Madsen. So, I'll oh, basically I'll lay down or are you gonna, they're not gonna be able to see. There we go, lay down. <sighs> oh my goodness, oh my goodness, there we go. Marvin was born to play music. He felt more comfortable on a piano bench than anywhere else. The piano was his best friend. Wherever he went, he heard music. In the park, other people watched the birds. Marvin listened to their songs. On the street, when car horns blared, Marvin knew what notes they were honking. When he played baseball, he thought about making melodies, not home runs. At home, he played the latest songs he'd heard on the radio, and he loved composing his own tunes. Music flowed through his ears and out of his fingers. But playing piano wasn't always fun. Practice, Marvin, practice, his father reminded him. All oh, that practice was too much. Marvin didn't like the old music his piano teacher had made him play, and all those exercises just made him sleepy. He tried all kinds of excuses. He forgot to clean his room. He was starving. He had to go to the bathroom. Marvin used that one so much his mother wanted to call the doctor. He became pretty good at finding hiding places just so he could, wouldn't have to practice. Whenever someone came over to his house, his father would say, listen to our Marvin play. The audience could be anyone, a neighbor, an aunt, or even the mail carrier. Marlene, sorry, my kitty is being a kitty. <laughs> Marvin didn't like that. Performing for other people gave him butterflies in the belly. My poor little boy, his mother would say. He's okay, mama, said father. All he needs to do is practice. Everyone liked Marvin's playing, but he wondered why he had to play music by composers with funny names like Wolfgang and Ludwig. Why couldn't he just play his own songs and have fun? Marvin loved music. It could take him on fantastic journeys. He'd close his eyes and daydream that he was the conductor for a very important orchestra. Best of all, they were playing his songs. One day, Marvin's father sat down next to him. Your piano teacher and I both think you're ready to enroll in one of the best music schools in the city. It won't be easy. You'll have to play in front of three judges without missing a note. That was harder than playing for neighbors. Just thinking about it brought back the butterflies. Marvin's father started telling everyone that Marvin was going to audition for the important school. They were all so impressed. Marvin was scared that this was a really big deal. Marvin was nervous on the morning of the audition. What if he made a mistake? He didn't want to disappoint everyone. His mother kissed him and gave him a surprise. Sweetheart, I bought you a brand new suit for your special day. It was Marvin's first suit. He was so excited. He felt all grown up, a suit just like his father wore. But after a few minutes, the wool in the suit made his legs itchy, and all he wanted to do was scratch. What would he do? He couldn't play the piano when he was all itchy and scratchy. Don't worry, Marvin, says his mother. Wear your soft pajamas underneath, and you won't feel itchy. That was much better, but Marvin felt a little silly wearing his orange bear pajamas underneath his suit. Marvin and his father arrived for the audition early and decided to explore the school. They peeked into classrooms, read notices on the bulletin boards, and watched students go from class to class. But still, they were early. Tell you what, Marvin, said his father, let's go up on the roof. It's such a nice day. That sounded like fun to Marvin. He even climbed the stairs two at a time. It was a clear day, and the sky was a beautiful blue. His father pointed out famous buildings around the city while Marvin watched the clouds pass by. One of the fluffy clouds reminded him of a soft lullaby. His father showed him how the people on the street below looked like ants, but to Marvin, they looked like musical notes. That made him start humming a little tune. Marvin closed his eyes and listened to all the sounds around him. He wished he could play his piano right now. It would be a city symphony. Marvin opened his eyes and looked at his father. Daddy, the music I love is the music I hear in my head, not that old music I have to keep practicing. Marvin's father smiled. 
Marvin, I know this is hard for you. I know you like to write songs, but the better you learn the piano, the better you can play them. Someday you will be playing not just for relatives, but for the whole world. Then he kissed his son on the forehead. Marvin smiled too. Being on the roof and talking to his father made him feel better. He couldn't face the judges and play his best now. They headed for the door to go back downstairs. It was locked. Help! Help! Marvin pounded on the dirty roof door with his fists. No one answered. His father leaned over the edge of the roof and shouted down to the street. We're locked out! Finally, someone heard them and came to open the door. Marvin arrived at his audition 25 minutes late. His hair was uncombed, his hands were covered with soot, and his new suit was all messy. You're a late young man, one judge said sternly. You might as well begin. Marvin walked over and sat down at the piano. He slowly raised his fingers. He thought about the music and what his father had told him, and just like that, everything changed. He was back with his best friend, the piano, and nothing else mattered. Marvin forgot about the judges and let the music sweep him along. It carried him far, far away from that windowless room back up to the rooftop and beyond. It was only when the last note was faded away that Marvin remembered where he was and what he was doing there. He looked toward the judges. They seemed happy. They were smiling, but then two of them started to laugh. What was so funny? And why were the judges pointing at Marvin's feet? Marvin looked down. The little orange bears were sticking out from the bottom of his suit pants. Even he had to laugh. Marvin passed the audition and was invited to attend the school. His mother and father were so proud, they read his acceptance letter to anyone who would listen. Marvin didn't feel that much different, though. He still had to practice, and sometimes he still became nervous when performing for people. But that didn't matter so much anymore, because he knew one day he would be playing music. His music. And that... would be magic. That's Marvin Hamlish in real life. So Marvin really didn't like to practice and um, it really kind of like made him start to kind of not like it very much anymore, right? He liked playing his music, not these other people's music, you know? And sometimes we like to learn what we like, right? And we like to do what we like, um, but we'll just not do that other stuff. Like if I really, really like English and I really, really like reading, I really, really don't like math, and I really, really don't like science. But all of those things kind of go into making you a really, really smart person. And you have to learn all of those things. Just like I had to learn Beethoven. I had to learn Bach. I had to learn Mozart, you know? And while I like them, sometimes that's not everybody's thing. Um, but it makes me a better musician and it makes other people better musicians when they learn about that stuff and kind of where music came from. So Marvin had to learn that good practice and learning the stuff sometimes that we don't really like sometimes still makes us into a, a better person at what we like to do, if that makes sense. So sometimes the hard stuff really is good for you in the end. I know that's really hard to think about right now. And when you don't like math and you don't like science, or you might not like reading, you might not even like school, but school makes you a better student and it makes you smarter and it makes you just a better person. So sometimes we got to push through the harder things to get to the more fun things like work before play, right? So um, just keep pushing on. I know you guys have those big dreams and you are so smart and you're going to do big, big things just like Marvin did. Um, and I encourage you to look up Marvin and see what he does and, and see him playing because he's a really, really good piano player. And he got through all that hard stuff to be exactly where he is now. And I know you will too. And I just want you to know that you're very smart. You're going to do huge, big things. And you can change someone's whole day by just being kind to them. Um, so stay safe, take care of yourself, and be kind. I love you, and I miss you, and I will see you next time. Bye.